At a better time, it brought so much glitter and entertainment into the lives of millions of New Yorkers in the depths of the Great Depression. And after all these years, there was a sad announcement about that music hall today. I'm announcing the closing of Radio City Music Hall at the end of the 1978 Easter show on April 12th. There was no last-minute reprieve this time. Last year, employees took a pay cut to keep Radio City open, but nothing could save it this time, not even the mayor. I've worked my ass off for five years to keep this, uh, this theater open. And I have, we have a number of corporations for which I'm responsible, and I put more time on this corporation than I have all of the others put together. And it's, uh, no one wants to shoot Santa Claus. One final question. Is there any chance the music hall will stay open? No. We have Rosemary Novellino here. Yes. Rosemary, where are you? She is a dance captain for the ballet. A welcome, please, for Rosemary <laughs> Novellino. Hello. Hello. Where did you study, Rosemary? Uh, most of my studying was in New Jersey with Irene Vokin, and then I also studied in the city with several major schools. You've been dancing since you were how old? Three and a half years old. What would you like to see happen to Radio City Music Hall now? I would like to see Radio City remain as it is, if at all possible. Uh, the format of Radio City Music Hall with the Rockettes and the stage shows is an institution in itself. And I, I mean, if things will have to change, possibly with movie companies or whatever, but I, the most important thing is try to save the format that, that is there. I mean, it is known nationwide, it is known Also as world. a piece of art and architecture, Definitely. as a as a symbol of uh, architecture, the early well, 30s the, and art right. deco, there's almost nothing else like it. That's there is right. nothing else like it. It's one of the the best art you deco. Can't, you know, art you, deco. You, just, you can't tear that down. No, you really no. can. It's part of our the energy of our heritage. Well, that's why we're here. We hope we can do something. We want the people to know. We want well, the people to We have to a lot respond. of people. Listen, a lot of people love Radio City Music Hall. <laughs> and nice a lot of hear. people will stand in line. I hope so. For I sure. Really so. We'll be back right after this. Today, the performers who work inside the music hall were outside, in costume, getting signatures on petitions. We're the show people's committee to save music hall, and we think it's a shame if they close this great place. It's an American institution. Why close it? We are not giving up the fight to save Radio City Music Hall, even though it is going to close on April 12th. We're still going to be in there fighting. We still want people to write and sign the petition, and let's keep this place open. Hoping that some 11th hour miracle will stop the closing, the workers had a lot of support from their public. Do you think that's important, ma'am? Well, I certainly do. I think it's a disgrace. This place is a landmark. I've been here since I was a little girl. I think it's terrible. The performers hope to pressure the state and federal government for additional support to keep the music hall operating. With us tonight, two members of the Show People's Committee to Save Radio City Music Hall, and they will detail their efforts for us tonight on how they're going and whether or not some rumors around that the music hall is going to be saved by private contributions or by the Rockefeller Center people in New York, whether those rumors have any truth at all. So that's our show for tonight. You two are facing some very, very stiff competition. You have uh, the Rockefeller Center people who say that it's been losing money for a long, long time. You have the motion picture people who say they can't supply the kinds of product that is necessary to keep that place going with family trade. How do you buck that kind of competition against you? Well, I think if we, if we can make everybody realize how important the music hall is, it's an institution. It's the only one of its kind in this country. And the, I feel, and the committee feels, that the music hall is, as I said before, an institution. The Rockettes are an art form. It's an American art form. And we've been chopping away at so many things in this country, and especially in New York, which I love. But if we keep chopping, there's not going to be anything left. And, well, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I, I think it's a crime. If they let the music hall close, it is over. It is gone. They will not build another Radio City Music Hall. There will not be another line called the Rockettes. They own the name. And so many people have grown up going to music hall. I did. I, I went there as a child. My parents took me. That was the first time I saw live entertainment. 
And it's a place you can bring a family with children for them to experience live entertainment without paying the prices on Broadway. Mm -hmm. And all I've read about this, and it's all I really know about it, because I, I, I don't know the people who run the theater, but the claim is we just don't have the financial wherewithal to keep this thing going. What would have to happen for this structure to be declared a, uh, a uh, what do you call it, a landmark, a national landmark or something like that, which would preserve it? Uh, there is a hearing for it to become a city landmark, March 14th. And um, I, well, the way I understand it, it won't take long after that hearing, which probably will take all day long, they can declare it a landmark that very day. And then what happens? Then the next step is for it to get on the national landmark. You know, the, if it's made a city landmark, it is saved basically for 310 days. It stalls it. Gotcha. And uh, they can't touch it for 310 days. They have to come up. That'll give them that amount of time to come up with a different solution if they... Have, so have you heard, uh, like, if it closes, what they will do at uh, 50th and 6th Avenue on that corner? Will they tear it down, or, or, or do they have any plans for it? Well, the original announcement was that they would turn it into a shopping mall, into tennis courts. We can't be objective. Everything that was suggested came as a shock to us, and, and mm -hmm. just, we couldn't comprehend tearing it down. Now there are all sorts of rumors, but nothing that's really substantial. We have over 70,000 signatures on petitions. And that's petitions for what? To keep the music hall open. And who do they go to? We are bringing them to the landmark hearing. Mm -hmm. Well, the landmark hearing is coming up in March. March 14th. March right. 14th. We shall report back. I hope that this has helped get the word out. I hope and for so. all those people who do not live in New York who have been to that city and have been to the music hall and know what it is, now you know what's going to happen if somebody doesn't do something. Thanks for making the trek out. I hope it turns out to have been well worth your while. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Rosemary. Thank you, Ron. Today, the New York Landmarks Commission will begin hearings on whether or not Radio City Music Hall should be declared a landmark. And Sandy Hill is outside the theater right now with two women who have made these hearings possible. Sandy? Thanks, Peter. With me here are the Lieutenant Governor of the State of New York, Mary Ann Krupsack, and also Rosemary Novellino, who is the president of the Show People's Committee to Save Radio City Music Hall. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Why do you think Radio City Music Hall should be declared? a landmark because it's a unique historical structure incomparable in beauty and has meant so much to the culture and the history of this state and to this country what will it mean if indeed it is declared a landmark it will mean that we have time to explore alternate uses besides the traditional christmas and easter shows which are always so popular with families and it will put an equal basis between the private owners and the public interest you'll also have more time to really reestablish a financial groundwork work for this absolutely right now they're claiming that the attendance has dropped and that that's why they want to close it but we think that they haven't really explored all the potential uses and haven't kept up with the times and I think creative new management could really be the answer. Well, as a matter of fact, Rosemary, there is no question but that the amount of attendance here at Radio City Music Hall has indeed dropped off. Why do you think that has happened? Well, I feel that if you uh, don't have the product that the public want to see, they won't come. But if you give them a product, possibly better films, that they will come. And you let people know that Music Hall is alive. Just the publicity it's gotten in the last month, we have had lines, incredible lines around the block since the Easter show opened. Larger lines than what you've normally had before, just because of that's, this. That's right. It's, it's brought it back to the public. What about money? How much money do you think it's going to, it will take to make Radio City Music Hall solvent? Promotion is is returned many times over in attendance. There are many things that's come to my attention already since the time I've been working with the group trying to save the Radio City, that they just haven't used the money that they do spend properly for promotion and for uh, production. People will come if they know that it exists and if they're attracted. New York State is spending $4 million on an I Love New York campaign, and one of the biggest things that we're emphasizing and getting a rate of return already is on our cultural strengths. The cultural institutions of New York are our mainstay of our economy. And Radio City has always figured in as one of the most prominent places on the tourist list. Let me ask you, what happens if this is not declared a landmark? I don't take no for an answer. This is going to be a declared but a landmark. what if it isn't? But it will be, because it's unique, and it's, it belongs to the people, and that's what the law is for, to balance interest, to give the private owners a reasonable rate of return, but to protect the public interest. 
This could be one of the Rockettes' last performances. It was choreographed to precision. On this bleak March morning on the steps of City Hall, they helped launch one of the most intensive lobbying efforts the City Landmarks Commission has ever seen, the fight to save Radio City Music Hall. Hundreds of people want to save Radio City. Before the Landmarks Commission, they were arguing that the Music Hall be made a landmark. That would put legal hurdles in the way of any sale or change. Legal hurdles that Rockefeller Center's president says is just what the Music Hall doesn't need. Landmark designation will bring about another negative accomplishment. It will leave me no choice but to apply for a permit to demolish the structure the day after such designation goes into effect so that at the end of 305 days I will be free to act. After weeks of tension, the night had finally come for a decision on the future of the historic music hall. You might be the last people to see this show the way it is. The capacity crowd of 6,000 seemed unwilling to accept that this show could be the last for the music hall and for the Rockettes and the singers and stagehands and costumers. The crowd cheered and applauded throughout the performance. And even as spectators stood for a final ovation, late negotiations continued between the state and city and Rockefeller Center, the owner of the music hall whose managers insisted the landmark had to be closed because of multi-million dollar losses. There still had been no word on plans to save Radio City as the Rockettes marched off stage to their dressing rooms. They gathered again here at a private party in a New York skyscraper, waiting gamely up to the midnight negotiation deadline and then past it until word finally came, the news sweeping instantly across the room. They tell me we are in business. Radio City Music Hall is saved, I don't know for how long. The negotiators say it is saved for at least a year. Thursday night, there will be another show. The last one was like a wake, said one dancer but this one will be like opening night. Last night, Carol Jenkins was with the Rockettes when they celebrated. I went to the phone. Uh, we had heard rumors. I ran to the phone and called one of our vice presidents, John Jackson. He spoke to me briefly for a second and put me on the phone with Music Hall's attorney, Alan Jaffe. And Alan Jaffe said, tell everyone the musical has been saved and to report to work tomorrow. And I said, thank you. <laughs> and I got off the phone and ran back in here. It's just, I can't believe it.